this timber here was most of it was was trees that had died during the drought but we had massive areas of, of mulga die yeah so this is a uh, mixture of timber and dirt wall that we did uh, about two and a half years ago it's been here now it's nearly a kilometer long this one it's on, on a big mulga flat um, this mulga flat floods in good rain events but it used to flood through here probably it would flood through in about six to twelve hours and it was all gone we're now getting it quite re like when it does flood it's it's more like 48 plus hours i have seen water still trickling through these timber walls up to five days after a rain event um, so it's slowing it down allowing the silt to drop like it used to c come through here fairly dirty water it's a lot clearer now and lifting the levels uh, a smaller event now is turning into a big event because it's allowing the level to lift and spread over the entire flat from from an inch of rain now is, is so far ahead of where it used to be and, and and it has a flow on effect we've noticed now these areas where we've done the works and 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 the, the soils improving and we've probably got better subsoil moisture even a, a little 10 mil rain event now that they mightn't flood anything but but you see those areas just respond so quickly and and i think we we're, we're going to go into droughts so much slower and we'll get out of them so much quicker and and go through them a lot better too as far as the restoring the landscape and developing drought and, and flood resilience you know when these landscapes are working they're just extraordinary you know people who were budgeting you know a hundred thousand for drought feed every year are finding now that they're putting that hundred thousand into into restoring country and that's that's their drought resilience they the increase in productivity is their is their drought resilience they're not having to buy in hay or cotton seed or just getting the landscape working is uh, that's their drought and flood resilience A lot of the work we've done here at the lake is all up the northern end where all the water comes in. And um, we've like changed big massive clay pan areas up there where we did have quite a bit of erosion, which was causing silt um, to build up in the lake. Like now that it's all completely grassed up and the water runs so much slower all over those areas now that the erosion's sort of getting less and less, which will, um, yeah, help with the silt in the lake. And um, it's also helped with all the, the native animals just because we've got so much more ground cover. The increase in native animals, like all the bird life, um, reptiles as well <laughs> um, here, is amazing. And the, the bird life in the lake, you know, has increased. I think there's a lot of little wetlands that um, they stay there for so much longer now because the water's all slowed down. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's benefiting us because we've got more grass, you know, for the stock to graze. And then it's benefiting the native animals as well. So they've got more habitat. Well, I'll take you out a erosion feature here now. Uh, we've been here seven years and we can see that it's slowly just chewing that floodplain away. Um, the water course on the verge of changing completely for where it used to run. I really like the timber banks because you can put it across an eroded feature and it'll steady that water up and it'll spread it out. You can put that into a couple of spreader banks across the flats. But then once it's stopped running that water, the timber lets it drain so it doesn't turn into a dam. So you're not drowning that pocket of country to get it to that height. Down further in this erosion feature here, there'd have to be nearly 15 foot of topsoil gone. This is where it's at now. When we first came here, this was the other side of the fence in seven years. So it's getting worse and it's just about joining up with these other water courses. The water hole just up there to the west of us. You can just drive a motor car between the water hole and the erosion now.
you find that spot that takes the littlest bit of money to get the biggest bang effect because once you see the results you're gonna go fuck it I'm going over here we're gonna spend some money we're gonna fix that bit of shit or we're going to spend five grand up here and fix that flat that's the biggest thing is just getting to the stage where you start spending the coin seeing the results you can see it in the ground the country it's trying wants to get going but just see the raisin features it's just draining it and we're getting nothing out of it if we can slow it down and get it in the ground there's an example right there there's grass it's all it needs at the end of the day water is everything um, if we're going to talk about you know, cell grazing and grazing at density, water is everything. If we've got a water system that can handle the numbers that we want to run, um, there is, you know, it's, it's so much more, it gives you so much more peace of mind. Um, you know, going on from that, obviously that we're talking about the primary limiting nutrient of water, you know, being there for cattle, but more so managing that raindrop and the way that it flows across our country is you know certainly the next biggest thing um, you know this is a good example this is sort of what they call the, the salad bowl country of the Warrego um, it runs out of the Warrego through the chewing system and spreads out into a channel system that's probably around 17 kilometres wide and stretches right through several of the SLM properties um, through into New South Wales so this is yeah this channel here yeah, it would have been sort of trickling along out of the Warrego from catchment as far up as, you know, north of Charleville. Um, it would have been running, yeah, sort of within the last week. It's just starting to dry out now. We've got cattle in this paddock and, yeah, our managers are sort of working the cattle across and through these channels. It's a little bit of a logistical issue and everyone's getting bogged quite often, but, um, but it's really worth it. We're able to, you know, have a little bit of um, animal impact added in, give a light sort of graze through but while it's green and growing, plus be able to push some of that veg matter back into the mud and well, back into the ground and you know, really activate the biology that's able to feed on it in there. We know that with our bare soils, we can be looking at up to 90% runoff on these really hard cap soils. And yet right beside those bare soils where they're working, where you've got organic matter, living roots and deep sponges in the soil that did a, a water infiltration, infiltration test just the other day. And, and this is in this semi-arid country. And in heavily grass where we had the right balance of trees as well, we were looking at 10 inches in, of, of water infiltrating in 10 minutes. So 10 inches, that's 250 millimetres. You know, a lot of those floodings that we're seeing around the country at the moment where it's been you know, 300 millimetres or 250 millimetres in a day or in a couple of days has caused extraordinary flooding. And yet where we've got these paddocks working, we can get that, that amount of water infiltrate in 10 minutes. It's hard to imagine until you see them restored. You know, when you see what they look like beforehand, you just can't recognise them once they're, they're restored. And once you've started to do a little bit, you suddenly realise the huge percentage of this landscape out here that looks so arid and so barren is actually wetlands and you know, floodplains, but they're just not functioning at the moment. And the biodiversity value of that should be huge. Unfortunately, that's, it's not being quantified and, and there's not value being put to that just yet, but I'm sure with time that's going to happen. But we had a heap of these banks and that wreck this year we had 66 mil storm in April in about 20 minutes it just punched holes in banks and made a bloody mess and we had another one in October 45 mil storm but that's maintenance it is what it is no different service in a motor car if you've got to go back and throw another reel up and so be it patch a hole here hole there happy days it's yeah it's sort of inevitable until they get grass right up you are going to have those things happen. The wing bank up here was gone, so the water just ran straight around the dam. I've replaced it and then I've just put a big contour bank in here because the erosion just kept chewing into this channel. And now it's just pushes out here onto this big dead gidgy swamp. 
but it's worked really well. And this here is very minimal cost. It's only machine hours, um, yeah, a bit of marking out, a couple hours marking out the laser and the results are there. Well, that's what it looked like. And that's what it is now. Within 12 months, we haven't thrown any seed out, no inputs. This has all come on its own doing. That there is exactly what this whole flat was. Turkey bush. Then you know, just had these scalded bare ass flats. There's certainly very large scale in these on these properties. And even in a drought year, you may still measure the accumulated water on that in those areas in, in feet. But still, if we can take bare soils and get them covered like this, surely that's of, of value in the biodiversity uh, and the impact that might have on, on climate change. And we've had to learn ways to do things incredibly cheaply and, and look for those big bang for buck uh, situations where we can improve a huge area for very little cost. And as you've seen with some of the, the works we're doing, they are ridiculously low cost, and which is exciting. You know, we don't have to have big dollars to, to restore country to an amazing degree. And if we focus on those, those highly productive areas, what we're finding is that it starts a chain reaction. It takes the pressure off the surrounding landscapes and, and that restoration flows on throughout the property. But, you know, the areas that have been improved have improved to such an extraordinary degree that that is now flowing throughout the rest of the property. We don't have to fix all of it.